ocean currents can be divided into two parts, surface current and deep current. Today, we are talking about the deep current. At the ocean's surface, wind moves the water, but what causes the waters in the deep ocean to move? What do you think? To deeply understand these currents, we must first understand the thermohaline circulations in the oceans. Before that, we review our daily experience in our room in the winter. We can imagine that we are in our room in winter and the window is open. The cold air moves from the bottom, the warm air moves near the ceiling, and air circulation is formed. Cold air is near the bottom because it is heavier. Now we focus on the water. The density of the water has been calculated based on this equation. This equation mentioned that when the temperature decreases or salinity increases, the density of the water increase. This is simple, but the result of it is very important for the ocean. One effect of this would be thermohaline circulation. Warm and salty surface waters move from low latitudes to high latitudes. The main difference between high and low latitude is the weather temperature. The weather is very cold in the high latitude for example, Greenland or Norwegian seas. When the surface water cool, the density of the surface water increase. So, the water sinks to the bottom and forms a deep current. This flow needs a force to move at the bottom. This forcing comes from the different densities of the water. Water moves from the point where its density is higher to the point where its density is lower. We name this circulation thermohaline circulation. Here thermo means temperature, and haline means salinity. Thus, this current would be a result of the distribution of the temperature and salinity in the ocean. A combination of thermohaline currents in the deep ocean and wind-driven currents on the surface, we name this system a global ocean conveyor belt. Here we concentrate on the deep current. The dense flow after formation starts its path when moving near the bottom of the ocean. The bottom of the ocean is full of roughness, and this density current has to change its path many times. The deep current when reaching the strait or sill shows interesting behavior. This dense flow fills one basin and then flows to another basin. Here we name overflow. The best example of this current would be the Denmark Strait overflow on a large scale. Now an important question that comes to our mind is the connection between this large scale current in the ocean and the deep water current in the Caspian Sea. Why have we discussed this circulation in the oceans initially? What do you think? Now with this vision, we concentrate on the deep current at the Caspian Sea. The key factor in the thermohaline circulation of the Caspian Sea is the stretching of the Caspian Sea along latitude. North Caspian is about 15 to 20 degree colder than South Caspian in the cold season. In the winter in the northern part, the weather is very cold, and the water starts to cool. What happens? The density of the surface water increases, and the sinking process occurs. This high density water flows from the northern basin to the middle basin due to the slope of the sea. Then this current fill the middle basin and, after that, moves to the southern basin from the Apsheron Strait. Here we name this dense flow and overflow like the Denmark Strait overflow. After entering the southern basin, it moves to a higher depth as it is heavier. The depth is more than 500 meter and creates a counter-clock circulation. Interestingly this dense flow reaching the Iranian coast near the Sephidrod Cape shows interesting behaviors the current separates from the coast and forms two eddies due to earth rotation. So, for the deep current in the Caspian Sea, three factors play significant roles. Density, bathymetry, and earth rotation. We should consider that the speed of this current in the southern Caspian Sea is less than 10 to 15 cm per second, so it moves very slowly. The formation and propagation of this type of current from the northern to the southern basin takes a few years. We should note that the surface current speed in the Caspian Sea is roughly less than 1 meter per second. Therefore, the surface currents caused by the wind are several times faster than the currents due to the density difference. We must always pay attention to the fact that in the ocean, such currents, for example, in Denmark Strait overflow, are about 100 km width, but in the Caspian Sea, they are small, for example, about 20 to 30 km. However, 
there are many similarities between thermohaline circulation in the ocean and this flow in the Caspian Sea regarding the formation mechanism, not the scale. This is the main reason we started our discussion from the ocean thermohaline circulation, and then we concentrated on the Caspian Sea. Indeed, the Caspian is a unique sea not only on the surface but also at the bottom. 